Hi Stampers, welcome. Thanks for joining me in my video today. My name is Rose Grunewald. I'm an independent demonstrator with Stampin' Up! and I'm stamping with you today in my fabulous stamping studio here in New Holstein, Wisconsin. Today I'm showing you this super fun card flat box that holds four greeting cards with envelopes. I think you're absolutely going to love the project. I am hopping along with the Stampers Dozen Blog Hop today. We're featuring our favorite tools, and I use some of my favorites in my studio to make this gorgeous project that I know you're going to love. So I think that we should get right to the fun. What do you say, huh? Okay, here we go. Okay, after I recorded this video, I realized that um, I did not capture my audio. So here I am talking over the video app. Now, the Stampers uh, Blog Hop, <clears throat> Stampers Doesn't Blog Hop features my favorite tools. And two of my favorite tools that I love in my studio is my paper trimmer and my bone folder. So we are going to use both of these. Now, the cool thing about your paper trimmer is that it's got two blades that are gonna make this project simple. Of course, in this project, I'm also featuring one of my favorites from the annual catalog, the Hand Penned Bundle. So I actually have my class to go in June featuring the bundle. Uh, we've got these gorgeous stamp set images in the stamp set for the bundle. There's 15 of them there. It's a two step stamp, which I love. You have the option to add that on in your class. Uh, my class also features the absolutely stunning memories and more pack, um, which is included in the class. There's lots of beautiful images and colors that um, <clears throat> you are going to love. And it also contains, of course, an embellishment, uh, a couple embellishments. So first we've got the Pale Papaya Open Weave Ribbon, which is one of my favorites, absolutely beautiful. And we always need to make sure we're adding bling to our cards. So it also contains these genial gems, which are absolutely gorgeous. And some of my favorites, my pack is almost completely gone. So you'll get to make 12 cards with this class to go. And if you're interested in that, you can go to my website, www.rosegrunewald.com to check that out right along the top of my uh, website, I have got a link that says classes to go and you can see it there. Now the box we're going to make today uses one piece of cardstock, which I love. Uh, you can make a lot um, out of like 12 by 12 pieces of cardstock or multiple pieces, but this 3D project just contains one piece of cardstock. Super easy. We're going to need two pieces here. Um, we're just using a standard eight and a half by 11 sheet of cardstock. Our two pieces are going to be three and a half by 11 and four and a half by 11. We're going to do some scoring and some folding with our bone folder. Uh, good thing that we have two blades on our trimmer. So here, let's talk about my favorite tool here. We've got a cutting blade and a scoring blade. Um, that dark gray is the scoring blade. And what's really cool about the trimmer is you can decide which one you want on the top or the bottom. You can pull these blades out. Um, and decide which arrangement you want to put them in. So we're cutting our first piece here and I'm lining this up at my four and a half inch mark. Now, of course I can line up the four and a half along the bottom, but the really neat thing is that there are lines all along this paper trimmer at one quarter inches apart. So I will not only line up the bottom, I'll also line up that line all the way along my card. So I line up that bottom piece. I make sure that it aligns all the way along the card. And actually the piece I'm cutting here is the three and a half inch wide piece first. We'll set that aside. And next I'm coming in with the four and a half inch piece. So again, lining that up on the bottom and then all the way along the side of my, the edge of my cardstock piece to make sure I have a straight line when I cut. Cut that off. And then I'm left with this half inch strip that I absolutely always save. It's really great to tuck onto your cards for sentiments or layers or just whenever you need a little tiny piece of cardstock. I'm gonna keep that in a hanging file folder in my file cabinet behind me. Next, we're gonna do some scoring on the long side of this 
piece on our 11 inch side. So we're going to line our 11 inch side against the flat groove of our paper trimmer. And we're going to need to score this in two places, five and seven eighths and six and three quarters. So I'm going to move this cutting blade out of the way, keep it out of the margin of my project. And we're going to use the scoring blade now. I'm keeping that tightly tucked up here. I don't want to accidentally cut my card. So here we go, we're scoring five and seven eighths. And now for our next piece, we need to bring out our arm of our paper trimmer. And what's really awesome about this paper trimmer is that it opens up so you can cut a nice wide piece of cardstock. You can cut all the way up to 17 inches, but when you store it, that arm folds down for easy storage and taking up less space. That's one of my favorite things about this paper trimmer. I absolutely love it. So we're going to line up our cardstock at the six and three quarters line, and we're going to score that just like so. Okay, next we're going to bring in our more narrow piece of cardstock. We have more pieces to score for this one, so we're going to score at four and a half, five and three eighths, nine and seven eighths, and ten and three quarters. So first is four and a half. We're scoring that line, and now I've got to move up to the top so I can get to our other measurements. Next I'm uh, scoring at five and three eighths, so the way I do that is line it up at five and a half and just shift it three, uh, one eighth of an inch smaller. Get that line scored. Next we're at nine and seven eighths, so almost ten inches score that and then our last piece is going to be at 10 and 3 quarters which is just going to leave us just a little quarter inch tab right on the end of our 11 inch piece of cardstock here okay now we're going to flip this over to the short side and do a little scoring we need to score at seven eighths of an inch. Now to make this a little bit easier, instead of lining up on the left hand side, when I am scoring these smaller widths, I like to go and use my little ruler on the right hand side of my uh, cutting and scoring groove. So I'll line this right up at seven eighths of an inch and score all the way down along this piece. Tuck that arm back down for easy storage. That's what I love about it. I don't have to store this whole big wide arm open piece. <clears throat> All right, we're going to do some burnishing on our score lines. So I like to score with the mountain or the popped up piece of the score line on the inside. So fold that over and burnish that edge with my bone folder. I love the bone folder, another tool in my stamp room that sees a lot of love. And we're going to fold and burnish on both of these score lines. Now you can already see this box is coming together. This is going to be our flap that opens from the top. So now for our narrower piece, we're going to score on all of our lines. I'm going to score this long one first, or fold I should say. Okay, and then we're going to score on each of our lines in the other direction. So burnish that edge really good with the bone folder. You want nice, crisp creases here that's going to make this box come together really easily. And then we're even going to fold over that little narrow strip. That's where our tear and tape is going to go to hold this flap together. <clears throat> now that's the piece that we're going to be doing some gluing on and we are going to need to um, cut out some of the flaps. I'm going to use my paper snips here. Very sharp point. I love it for fussy cutting. It gets into those nooks and crannies really perfectly. So we're just going to cut all the way along these score lines up to that next score line along this strip. So snip each of these pieces here. Again, you're stopping right at that next line. And you 
you've got each of those pieces cut out. Now I need to just snip this piece right off, this little tiny rectangle. And then we want to clear out some of the bulk at the seam. So these squares here that I've cut off, I'm going to come in and snip at an angle so that we clear just a little bit of the bulk out for when we glue this together and we're left with this notched edge here. And we're going to do this on both sides of each of these little squares. And then we're also going to snip off the sharp corner edges of that flap. Get these little pieces out of the way. And so you can see here what we're left with are these notched edges. This is just really going to make gluing your project down much simpler because we've cleared out a whole bunch of the bulk that's going to be at the seams for when we glue that all together. Okay, so as we go to do our adhering, the first piece we're going to do, we need a really strong... Um, these are going to, we're going to glue those smaller pieces onto the larger tab and we're going to be using stamp and seal plus for that because we want a good strong quality adhesive. The box will end up closing together like so and on the little tiny edge we'll put some tear and tape because that's going to glue and tuck right behind that bigger panel. Tear and tape is the same width as that little strip on the end. <clears throat> So we'll get that out. I'm just going to tape that down onto that little tab. So you just rip a piece off the size you need. Of course I made it too big. I love that this is exactly the width of our tab. And it's hanging out over the edge, so that's okay if it hangs out over the edge. You can just grab your paper snips and trim that little piece off. No big deal. So we'll wait to tear off that little wax paper piece and we will do a little bit of adhering on our little square tabs. I'm using Seal Plus because we want a good quality strong adhesive. This is another of the favorite tools in my craft room. You don't have to push very hard with this. These adhesive runners are just smooth and amazing. So we've got adhesive on both of these tabs. And then you fold this in, you're going to want to line up the edge of your um, the edge of your flap with the score line from that little square so that they meet just perfectly. They meet right at the seam. And then you go and you do that on the other side. Same thing. Line up the edge of your flap with the score line from your solid piece. And then you can go on the inside of your box to get that nice and secure. We'll glue that piece last. So when we close this together, we'll adhere that and then that flap will be the last piece we'll be able to put glue down. So tear this piece off of my tear and tape. And again, we've got creases and score lines here. So we're just going to line up that score line with the edge of our cardstock. And then on our last flap, all we're going to have to do is add a little adhesive and flip that over. Very light touch is all you need. Flip that over. Now I want this good and secure, so I always like to flip my box over and grab my bone folder to get in there and use the hard surface of my table to push against and really get that good and glued. We want that solid. This is going to hold our four cards and envelopes.
Now our flap is going to go over the top like so, and it's going to flap right into that little folder. Now we're going to do a little bit of decorating on our box. So I've got, I like to store my memories and more pack in these empty stamp cases. You can see the beautiful patterns of this paper and I've chosen a few that I think coordinate here. These are double sided and I'm going to use these three pieces I think will coordinate really well together. We're also going to use some of the Pale Papaya Open Weave Ribbon that comes in my June class. I thought that this would coordinate really well with the colors that I chose. So we need to cut our piece down to fit on our box front. So get my trimmer back out. We are going to cut this piece to 4 inches by 2 inches. So the one side here is already four inches long. So you can see we're just going to have a little bit of a border here. We'll cut that off at two inches. And then when we adhere it to our box, we're just going to center that and leave a little border all around the outside. Make sure you save your scraps. Okay, get our silicone craft sheet out, a really strong adhesive, very light touch. And we're just going to glue this here. The stuff is really strong, so I always like to make sure it's lined up exactly where I want it before I push the layer down onto my project. And again, just like we did with our other pieces, we can flip this over and use the hard surface of the table and our bone folder to get in there and get a good adhesive seal on that. <clears throat> okay, now we are going to place our ribbon. Get, first, the, what you need to do is kind of arrange how you're going to want to tie your ribbon so that you can get the right size piece. And once you figure out the length you need for your ribbon, just snip that off. We're going to do a little cheating with tape. Now don't worry, you are not going to see the tape on the back side of this. I always like to make sure that I have this ribbon placed in the right place for when I go to tie it in a bow. And once I have that generally figured out, then we're just going to tape this ribbon in place. We're going to cover this up, so again, don't worry. Tape this down. I'm just using regular old scotch tape. And we're going to be gluing our flap over it. Now the nice thing about the Seal Plus is because you need a soft touch, it's okay to be doing this on our open box. Very soft touch. We're not crushing anything. And again, we need this good and tight, so I'm going to do a couple rows of our adhesive here. Perfect. Then we just line up the edges of our cardstock piece with the edges of our folder that we just created. Glue this down. Take that bone folder again on the inside of our box and make sure it is good and secure. We want to hold our four cards. This is coming together pretty quickly. So when I close this, as you can see, that's going to be our flap. I want to decorate the front. So I will center this piece, and then this taller piece is going to go over the top. 
but I want this to go inside the box. So I'm just taking a mental cue of where I should line up these pieces. Okay, get our seal plus again. Glue down our layer. You know, that flap is going to tuck in here, and then I'm making a mental note of where I should put my dimensionals. And uh, so I've noticed that I've got about an inch strip on the bottom, so I will put the dimensionals on the other side on the north of that one inch strip. So you get a couple dimensionals in all of the corners. And then two in the center. Take the box off. And we'll just line this up. And adhere that good. Push down on each of those dimensional pieces. Now all that's left to do is tie our ribbon. I'm going to off-center this so it's not matchy-matchy everything in the center here. I'm just going to tie this in a bow. Get your um, tail and your ribbon or loops the size you want them. Trim off the ends. Remember now, this is a box that's going to hold four beautiful cards and envelopes. So we get our cards and envelopes and tuck them in here. What a wonderful gift to give, by the way. You close your flap, slide it in here so that this front panel is in front and that is tucked behind. And there we have our finished project. Isn't this gorgeous? Absolutely stunning. You open that up and there's the beautiful four cards. Everyone in my family is always begging me to give gifts like this at Christmas time and birthdays. So this is a well-loved, beautiful, handmade box of cards. If you need supplies, I would love if you would shop my online store. I would be super thrilled to be your Stampin' Up! demonstrator. Uh, you can shop my online store and, of course, find other inspiration from me here at my website, www.rosegrunewald.com. Right there is that web page. Also, make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel so you can have all my videos in one handy place. You're going to love to be inspired by me. Thanks for joining today. I'll see you soon.